The Woman's Army Accelerated Corps by Isabella Tigges and Elena Beale. The WAAC happened in the 1940s when World War II was happening. The WAAC was made because they needed the men in the army to stop doing their non-comic jobs. They needed the men to fight in World War II. So the woman came in and did the men's non-comic jobs. Sometimes the woman would come and help back up the men in battles. Over 150,000 women joined the WAAC in World War II. Only 40 of those women were African American. The Women's Army Exhilarated Corps is an inspirational event and it is a triumph in history. It is a triumph because now all women have the right to be in the military. But many women did die getting this right and families went through tragic losses. One of the battles that the women helped fight in was fought overseas all across Europe and the Soviet Union invaded Poland and took over most of the Eastern Europe. Another battle that they helped fight in was in Japan and the battle was called the Battle of Okiniwa. And it was one of the most bloodiest battles in history and it happened on April 1st, 1945. Even though they did not fight on the front lines at these places, they did do numerous other jobs to help out. For example, Weather observers and forecasters would check the weather and warn the WAAC women if bad weather was coming. Sourographers would write documents or other important papers. Radio operators would work the radios and send out information with them. Repair women would fix things like vehicles when they broke. Sheet metal workers would work on the metal. Parachute riggers would clean and inspect the men's parachute to make sure it was safe to use. The link train instructors would set up a flight simulation for the men. Bomb site maintenance would help out with anything that involved bombs. Aerial photograph analysts would take pictures and look at pictures. The mechanics would also fix things such as vehicles like the repair woman. And control tower operators were lookouts. The women did this training and more at Fort Demons, Iowa. Fort Demons, Iowa was the first training center of the Women's Army Exhilarated Corps. But it was not easy at all to find a training center. They spent weeks trying to find the perfect or ideal training center for the WAAC. They had four weeks of training. On their training days, they would do drills, physical training, map reading, and sanitation. 35 Thousand women wanted to do the volunteer work, or what the men called it, soft jobs. The volunteer work they could have done was drivers, cooks, clerks, organization companies, and typists. There were requirements that the women needed to meet in order to be in the WAAC. Some of these requirements are you needed to have good health, be at least five foot tall, and you must weigh more than a hundred pounds. If you were married, your kids needed to be 14 or older. Also, if you were Japanese or African American, you could have been kicked out of the WAAC. And if you didn't put your application in between May 27th through June 4th. The woman had to worry not only about the requirements they had to follow, but they had to worry about their jobs. Some of these jobs and positions are the Black War is where the African-American woman got segregated from all the white women. Some other positions and jobs are the Air Force. The Air Force was one of the first branches for the WAAC women to do. The U.S. Coast Guards are in short terms the SPARS. The SPARS will replace the men from their duty and then the woman would fill in their place and be officers by the sea. The waves was where the women got accepted for volunteer work. The Marine Corps would fight in battles and back up the men. The Aircraft Warning Service and the Army Ground Force would watch to see if enemy planes were coming. The Army Medical Department are nurses and they kept everyone healthy. The Signal Corps would help communicate. The Emergency Service Group would back up anyone or any situation if they needed help or if they were in trouble. The Transportation Corps would move items and transport people to hospitals. 
the Chemical Warfare Service would deal with the chemical items and chemical weapons. And when doing these jobs and positions, the women needed to wear uniforms. They wore different outfits for different events they went to. When they got pictures taken, they wore dress shoes, army green mid-length pleated skirts with an army green blazer, a shirt and tie underneath, and a hat. And for work, they would wear an army green jumpsuit, a hat, combat boots, and a shirt and tie underneath. And on the uniforms, there were buttons with the Greek goddess Pallas Athena on it to symbolize wise and peace in the arts of war. The WAAC had outstanding fighters and directors to manage the woman. One of the women who helped was Edith Nurse Rogers. Edith was from Massachusetts, and she was a congresswoman. Miss Rogers met with General George C. Marshall and told him that she intended to introduce a bill to establish a woman's army separate from the existing Army Nurse Corps. Another woman who helped establish the WAAC was a Vita called Poppy. She was born in Texas. When she was a child, she always helped with work that had to be done, and she loved to command and be a leader. She and her family was always helping the poor and neighbors. She was a commanding officer and one of the first directors of the Women's Army Exhilarated Corps. As soon as she found out that the bill was passed, she went straight to Fort D. Moines and started recruiting and putting up posters all over so the woman knew how and when to join. Ovia and Edith were so surprised to see the turnout, so they put the woman to work right away. Another woman who helped a branch of the Women's Army Exhilarated Corps was Loretta Skimoller. She was an Ohio native and she was born in 1900. She came up with the transportation for medical care. Skimoller later invented the ideal of air ambulance after a devastating tornado in 1930. She was also very good friends with Amelia Earhart, who sadly died flying a plane across the Atlantic. Earhart was president of the 99 Group, or the International Organization of Women Pilots. Loretta helped 117 women get their pilot's license in the WAAC. All of these women have had a big impact on the Women's Army Exhilarated Corps. The Women's Army Exhilarated Corps has changed per the perspective of the country for the better. The WAAC had strict requirements to go by, and they had outstanding women that helped build the WAAC. The Women's Army Exhilarated Corps is a triumph in history. It is a triumph in U.S. history that has inspired women all across the country. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud